Hey there guys and gals, my name is Jason Lanier and today I'm going to talk to you about the brand new 50mm FE lens by Sony. This is the 1.4, the big boy, the Zeiss. Let's go. So guys, it's July 19th here in uh, Southern California and across the world. And uh, this lens just uh, arrived at my doorstep today. I got a loaner I'm able to utilize and uh, take with me on a trip to Honduras. You know, one thing that I'm very big on is I don't comment on gear that I haven't used. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of sites out there, tons of YouTubers even, who they'll literally, which I think is ridiculous, they'll literally find out about a press release and just for clickbait, they'll read you the spec sheets. You guys are watching a YouTuber read a spec sheet. Don't do that. I can't believe, I, they're doing it for views, but I, I'm digressing. Today I'm going to talk to you about this 50 millimeter that I've had a chance to use for the last hour or so. Um, like I said, it's July 19th. Tomorrow, I fly to Honduras. I don't have the chance to go out and do a full-blown shoot because this was an unexpected surprise. It arrived at my doorstep today, and uh, now I have to go to Honduras tomorrow. It's wonderful because I'm going to be able to film a bunch of videos for you guys using this 50 millimeter 1.4, but... Uh, to be able to show you guys some shots just from today, what I did is I took my sons out just across the street. About as simple of a photo shoot as you could possibly do. I used, I set up the uh, eyeliner by Westcott, just using a simple C-stand, set up the eyeliner, and I did a shoot. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share some of those pictures. Again, it was a very simple shoot. I think all told, we shot for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And uh, I, I really wanted to test this lens. I shot the entire shoot at 1.4 wide open because if you've heard me in many of my videos talk about wide aperture lenses I see no purpose in having a wide aperture lens if it's not good wide open if it's 1.4 it should be good at 1.4 not 1.8 or wherever else beyond that so I've had a chance to use this guy so far I'm very very impressed um, my initial thoughts just on the build it very much uh, it looks pretty much identical from the outer construction to the 35. It's brother, the 35 uh, millimeter Sony's ice, which is also 1.4. Um, has a stepless aperture ring, has um, autofocus, manual focus, a, a switch on here, you can uh, go on and off. With the aperture ring, you can make it clickless, so it can be very smooth for video applications, which is what you would want. And for more still applications, where you really want to know where that aperture is resting, um, you can make it clickable. The outer construction of the lens feels very solid, feels very robust and sturdy. Here's what the front element looks like. And guys, again, I'll be able to do a full-blown review on this. This is just quick observations and a quick shoot to show you guys some initial thoughts because lots of people have interest about this lens. Um, and in Honduras, doing tons of crazy model shoots, tons of crazy stuff over there that we'll be able to share with you guys. Um, the actual weight of the lens feels, it's pretty hefty. It's pretty hefty. Um, compared to its brothers, I have its two big brothers here, or one's a younger brother, one's a bigger brother, depending on how you look at it. Here's the 35. Okay, so if you're looking at them from a height perspective, they're pretty much identical. This one, this is the 35. It looks a little taller, but it's, it's just because I have a UV filter on this one. I use B&W uh, uh, UV filters on the front of my lenses to protect them, and there's no lens flare with the B&W or the Zeiss uh, UV filters, by the way, for what it's worth. Uh, all other filters I've never liked, Hoya, Tiff, and whatever else. I never put those on the front of my lenses because um, it causes lots of problems. Um, but again, from the size perspective, if you took away that UV filter, they're just about the same height. I'd say they're pretty much identical. From there, you could almost, almost mistake one for the other. Um, the 50 is a little bit wider from its body perspective, it kind of bows out a little bit wider for what it's worth. Again, both of them have stepless aperture rings. Both of them have the autofocus manual focus tab. Both of them have uh, the, the focus, uh, the groove focus ring here on front so you can dial in your focus. Um, lens hoods, the 35 is much smaller of a lens hood compared to the 55, so that's a little bit more robust. Compared to the G Master, Pretty much the identical height, 
as the G Master, as the 85. The G Master is much wider and it is, the G Master is definitely heavier, at least from what I can tell. I mean, it, it's got to be heavier, or the, either that or I'm challenged, which could be possible. G Master over the other two lenses has a focus lock, which is, which is cool, which I do utilize. Has a little bit better of a, of a lens hood just because it, it, uh, it locks. I do like that on the G Master. Whereas on the 35 or the 55, it does not. Other than that, from an out, from an exterior perspective, there's really no difference um, in these lenses. Um, Focus-wise, how did this lens perform? Again, initial thoughts. It, it focused very well. I have shots in here where, again, I took my sons out. I have triplets, if you guys don't know. So there's three 13-year-old boys that I'm trying to get focus on. Um, and what I did with this shoot, just so you guys know, is I shot, again, the individual portraits all at 1.4. And uh, it seemed to track that, that closest eye to the lens really well. Um, I used facial recognition when I shot this. I did not use eye autofocus only because of time. I really do have to get to Honduras tomorrow, so this is a super quick video that I'm fitting in in the rest of my life of trying to get ready to leave for another country, and I have like 12 hours to do so. Um, making this video, editing it, and uploading it for you guys. But I do appreciate you watching, by the way. Um, the last thing I did on this shoot that you guys will notice is um, I put all three of my boys together and I shot it at different apertures. So I think I went uh, 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, and f8 just to give you guys a different look as to how the lens performed um, my initial thoughts on the look and feel of it i think i think it's beautiful i really do um, how does it compare to the 55 i don't know it definitely lets in more light uh, there's no disputing that it's a little bit wider and wider you know uh, angle and it's obviously a faster lens it's 1.4 to 1.8 um, again i will do a side-by-side -side comparison of them um, and i and i hope that when you guys review the shots, I'm going to do a voiceover on the shots so you guys can, you know, get some of my feedback as I'm looking at it. Um, one thing to note is, you know, one of the ways that I can tell if a lens is sharp or not is I look at that first eye, that, that eye that's closest to the camera, and I compare it to the other eye. When you're shooting wide open, there should be a distinct difference. My boys happen, they're very handsome boys, and of course I'm very biased, but uh, um, they have long eyelashes. And so you can really see each and every single eyelash. It's really, really pretty remarkable. You can also tell there's a distinct difference between the eye that's closer to the lens, which the way that I shot it, that was their left eye. And the right eye is distinctly out of focus. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I think the shots turned out great. With all of these shots, I only edited them using Lightroom because of time's sake. And that's kind of how I do it anyways. I don't like to alter the shots too much because... When you're teaching people online, what you want to do is give them something that's close to reality, not some over-processed image that isn't close to what was taken by the photographer. I don't mind photo processing, but if you're going to teach online, you should probably give the viewers something close to what they could replicate at home. So again, with these shots, it was just a quick bounce back from the uh, eye lighter going back towards my boy's faces. Uh, got some catch light in the eyes with the eye lighter. Again, I love the eye, eye lighter. Not sponsored by Westcott, for the record. I am a Sony artisan of imagery, so Sony, there are times that I can get loaner stuff like this from Sony, and that's fantastic. Um, I do plan on buying this lens. Um, I think when you um, look at these lenses, um, you have, I think this is like the trinity of primes for Sony, right? You got a 35.14 a 51.4 and an 85.14. Now when Sony came out with the mirrorless cameras, what did everyone say? Their lenses suck. Well, they don't anymore. I don't know what else to say. Look at these bad boys. Now people say, well, the lenses are too heavy. Well, guys, you, <laughs> you gotta have glass in there, right? One thing I do know is this. I shoot one-handed. If you guys watch my videos, I shoot one-handed all the time with these lenses and my, and my uh, a7R2. And I, the shoot I did on the a7R2 as well. I shoot one-handed all the time. I do it with the smaller E-mount lenses and I do it with these bigger, more robust prime pro lenses without a problem. I can tell you that I could not do that with Nikon. When I shot Nikon, nothing against Nikon, great gear, nothing against them. And Canon is the same way. I always tell people at my workshops, I don't care what you shoot with. Just choose the best gear that works for you. Let's get over this gear war stuff. 
At any rate, with Nikon, um, there's no way I could shoot it one-handed. Just be, the size of the camera body plus the lens, it just, for prolonged periods of time, there's no way I could do that. Whereas I, I'm still able to do that with the Sony mirrorless, even with the bigger lenses. And for those of you who may know me from my 10 reasons video where I listed the many reasons, the 10 reasons, my 10 reasons why I left Nikon and went to Sony, um, weight was one of them, but it was just one, just one reason. And it still to this day is an issue. It still to this day is a benefit. So um, I'm very happy. Um, this isn't gloating. Canon and Nikon already have great glass. I'm just thrilled that Sony's coming out with this stuff and they're coming out with it in a hurry. Guys, make sure to keep watching uh, my channel because um, I'm going to be uploading videos from Honduras. We're going to be shooting on Mayan ruins and we have model shoots and shooting in the jungle and we're going to be crazy stuff. And because I have this 50, I'm going to be utilizing it quite a bit. So let's take a look at some of the pictures, guys. So here are my handsome boys. This is Kevin. You're going to see a close-up shot of him here. You see that eye that's closest to the lens is a lot more in focus than the one to the, to the right. Here's the... My boy's just screwing around a little bit. It's my son Michael. He's the show off in the family. He takes after me in that regard. Looking dapper. All of them to get haircuts for the day. Again, another close-up shot showing Michael. Showing that eye and that man, those eyelashes. The girls are going to go nuts. Laughing, having a good time. I love the background rendition from this lens. If you look at the background, it just looks like it's like in a jungle where you guys saw the picture we shot. It was just in a neighborhood. And again, here's a real close-up shot of my son Jason. Uh, and those eyelashes and the eye and the cash that just looks amazing. So here's the three of them at uh, f4. Now at 5.6. f8. 2.8 and even at 2.8 everything seems pretty in focus. Even at 1.4 it's pretty amazing how much is in focus but you can tell the background is different. So guys, this lens is about 1500 bucks. You can get it off of you know, any of the major photography websites. Um, I it's gonna ship around the end of July. So I would imagine most people are gonna have this in their hands beginning of August, so on and so forth. I don't know about the supply, how many there will be. Um, I, I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be more available. This is my opinion. I think it'll be more available than the 70 to 200. I don't know though. But um, I think it'll be a popular lens. I mean, everybody needs a 50. Obviously, Sony already has a 50.18. Um, that's their less expensive version. It's like 250 bucks, which I think is great. Every camera manufacturer needs to have different levels of lenses for their different levels of photographers. So the photographer who can only afford a $250 1.8 lens, I'm glad there's that option. There needs to be a system, a, a camera manufacturing system needs to have those different levels of lenses. And I'm glad that Sony is listening to their customer base and is doing that. Uh, for me personally, I haven't bought the 51.8 um, because I'm going to go with the 1.4. Kind of the same thing ever since I bought the Sony G Master 1.4, I haven't used my Baddest 1.8. Now the Baddest 1.8 is one killer 1.8 lens, but you guys get my point. At a, at a certain point in time, um, I'll get all the 50s together that I can find from Sony, or I'll get the 55 Zeiss, the 1.8, I'll get the... Uh, the 50 1.8, I'll get this. I'll even get the A mount, the 50 1.4, uh, and, and put all those together and, and do a review and let you guys see for yourself what you think. So hi, I haven't had a chance to compare the bokeh and all that yet, but uh, you know, I, I just shot this in front of a bush. So I hope you're able to draw some conclusions from it, just get a first peek. It's kind of a trailer, or a sneak preview as to what this lens is going to do and how it will perform in the marketplace. I think it'll be popular. Whether or not it is, is depending on if you guys like it. I think I'm going to love it. I can't wait to show those shots from Honduras. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know if these help. And uh, I just really appreciate you guys following me. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, don't forget to click on notifications for this channel. That way, every time I do release a video, you are notified. Otherwise, you'll just get a notification once every week or two. If you guys want to keep up to date on all the really awesome videos we have coming out, especially for this guy, Make sure to click on notifications. So until next time, guys, keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Find the right gear that works for you. Thank you for, uh, to Sony for allowing me to, to borrow this. And I can't wait to see what we do with it. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Talk to you later. Bye. You guys still here? Hello? Talking to you.
Hey guys, if you want to learn online with me, go to patreon.com slash Photography, and you will be able to continue this craziness online from anywhere on planet Earth with me. If you want to join me live, go to jasonlinear.com slash workshops and you'll get to see me in my full glory live and in person, guys. I think there's a smudge on there. Yeah, I got it. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.